Acetaminophen poisoning. Some background. It's one of the most common causes of acute liver failure. In the U.S. alone, it causes over 300,000 hospitalizations per year. It's one of the most common medications that we see both in the hospital and out of the hospital. And this is something that is very important to know about. So how does it cause liver injury? Normally, it's metabolized through glucuronidation and sulfation, or it's excreted unchanged in the urine. About 5% of a therapeutic ingestion is metabolized through cytochrome 452E1 to the toxic metabolite NEPQI or NAPQI. Uh, normally, NAPQI is bound by intracellular glutathione and then it's excreted harmlessly. Uh, however, in supertherapeutic ingestions, more and more substrate is metabolized via the CYP450 pathway. This creates more and more NAPQI, which overruns the cell's glutathione stores. Uh, it can then bind indiscriminately to macromolecules. It causes reactive oxygen species formation, mitochondrial damage, and then eventually cell death. So you're either worried that your patient has liver injury or your patient does have liver injury. What can we do about it? We have an antidote. It's called N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. Uh, the way it works is it repletes glutathione stores, uh, thereby decreasing the amount of free NAPKI that can run around in the cell and cause problems. Uh, it comes in PO and IV form. It's very cheap, and there are very few side effects. Uh, so when should we use it? Should we give it to everyone? Uh, Back in the 1970s, uh, two toxicologists, Rumack and Matthew, developed a nomogram to help determine when NAC should be used. In the initial studies, all of the patients who developed liver injury were found to have a acetaminophen concentration correlating to a level of at least 200 micrograms per milliliter at four hours after injection. So, somewhat arbitrarily, the people who made the guidelines said, you know what, let's be safe and treat everyone with a level greater than 150 milligram micrograms per milliliter at four hours. That way, we can be sure we're picking up everyone with uh, a clinically important ingestion. Uh, in order to use it, you plot the acetaminophen concentration against time. Uh, you reference the 150 line which is the line that shows what the concentration would have been at a given time with a hypothetical level of 150 micrograms per milliliter at four hours. If the concentration is greater than the 150 line, you treat with NAC. If not, you don't. Some caveats. Uh, you need to use a four-hour level and no earlier. Why four hours? Uh, that is when you would reasonably expect an oral load to be fully absorbed and in the serum. Uh, if you measure a level before then, you potentially would miss some load that would be in the GI system and not in the serum yet. Uh, second caveat is that the time of ingestion must be known. Let's say you measure the concentration to be 50, but the time is unknown. If the time of ingestion is 4 hours ago, then no treatment is indicated. But if it was 12 hours ago, you would treat. So, let's say you have a patient with an unknown time of ingestion with uh, some level of acetaminophen in their serum. Should you treat or not? It's Well, it's hard to say. Uh, this gets into the realm of regional practice variation and expert opinion, which we're going to be covering in part two. So some take-home points. Acetaminophen poisoning does not have an acute toxidrome in most clinical settings. and uh, However, it can be very deadly. Uh, NAC is the antidote for acetaminophen poisoning. It works by repleting glutathione stores, uh, thereby scavenging NAPKI, the toxic metabolite. The Rumac Matthew nomogram shows when to reasonably expect liver injury to occur, and therefore when NAC should be given. You use it by plotting the serum concentration versus the time of ingestion. Uh, two major caveats, the time of ingestion must be known, and the time of ingestion must be greater than four hours. Uh, but if given in time, mortality, mortality and morbidity can be significantly reduced.